remember what the first two things are. <laughs> What's this say? Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, we're going to read a quick two verses, verse 20, I say quick two verses, uh, verse 20 through 21, and then we're going to uh, get into the word. Ephesians chapter 3, this should be a very familiar passage to you. Uh, it's one I cling to, and I like to remind myself of every once in a while, because it's important to remember that God is able, amen? Chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 20, says this, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Let's pray. Father God, I am so thankful, Lord, that you are able. Lord, uh, there have been many times that, uh, that uh, we may doubt. Lord, we may reason why you can't. Uh, we, may, we may just fall short in our, in our faith. Uh, but, but Lord, the truth is that you are able, and I am so thankful for that. I pray that you would just be with us as we look at your word, to help us as we study it, Lord, as we are reminded of what you're able to do. Lord, that our faith might grow, Lord, that we might be strengthened to, to continue to persevere, Lord, that we might seek your help, Father, for those things that we need. We ask you all these things in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Amen. I love this passage of scripture. I love it. It says, "Now unto him that is able." Now think about that for a minute. What what, what exactly is that saying? It, it goes on to say, "To, to him be glory," but he, to, unto him that is able. Who? What is he able to do? Well, more than we could ever ask or think is what the is is, is the context of the verse. Now, that's the promise, that he's able to do more than we can ask or think. But the context of the verse, we need to jump back a couple of verses and, 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 and remember that what this is in reference to is Paul praying for the church. And, and so jump up to verse 14 with me, if you would. And he says in verse 14, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ with, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding, abundant, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in him, or in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout the throughout all ages, world without end. What a, what a blessing to think as Paul says, listen, I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for your spirit, I'm praying for the strength in your inner man, and we, we'll go through these things here in, in, in a moment. Says, well, I'm praying for that. I want you to remember this. God is able. Don't, don't ever forget, we've been talking about prayer and, and, and specifics in prayer and how Christ taught the disciples to pray. But, but one of the things that we need to remember is that God is able to answer our prayers. Now, I, I, I don't want you to get come to this, the understanding or belief that, or, 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 that, or become weakened by the fact that sometimes God doesn't always give us what we're asking for. Right? Uh, sometimes God does not answer our prayers. We, we talked in the last few weeks, we talked about Peter as the church uh, prayed for Peter uh, as, he was, uh, as he was imprisoned. And, uh, but many times we forget that James was executed just before Peter was, was, uh, was, was uh, supposed to be executed. Now, I can guarantee you that they didn't just start praying when Peter was arrested. I'm sure they prayed for both of them. Uh, but but uh, but God saw fit, God saw fit to, to free Peter for his specific purposes and his specific reasons. Sometimes God doesn't give us what we're asking for. But can I tell you, that does not mean that we shouldn't ask. 
It, it shouldn't give us a reason to, to doubt whether or not God is able. God is able not because of, uh, of the, the bigness or the smallness of our, of, of our request. Uh, G. Campbell Morgan was once asked uh, by, by, by a woman, she came up to him, she goes, she goes, should I ask God just for the big things or can I ask God for the little things too? And his response was this, hey, do you really think that your big things are big to God? The truth is, our, our big things, the, the greatest thing, the, the heaviest weight, the heaviest burden that we bear is nothing compared to the, what the, the ability of our God is to be able to deal with it. We have a God who is able. I want you to look at a few verses with me. Uh, turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. i got too many notes stuffed in my Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. It says this in verse 12. It says, that's the wrong passage. Maybe it's 1 Timothy. No, it's first. It's, sorry, chapter 1, verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul here in this passage is saying, I know who he is. It's, it's the God of all creation. It's uh, the, 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 the one who spoke everything into existence. I know who he is, and I know that he is able to keep everything I committed unto him. What did Paul committed unto him? His soul, his life, uh, his salvation. He trusted that God was going to keep his word in, 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 in the forgiveness of his sins and in the, the, the promise of the inheritance and the promise of the strength that, uh, that he uh, had, uh, had offered. He knew that he could trust the Lord. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Uh, the word succor means, or succor or succor means, he's able to, to run to their aid. It says that because Christ has already suffered uh, that same temptation that, that we've gone to, he is able to come and, and come to our aid. We know that when we're in trouble and we're struggling with temptation in our life, that we have a God who is able to help us. I don't know about you, but it, it doesn't do any good to ask somebody for help when, they can't, when, they, when they're not any good at what you're asking for. If, 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 if you were to come to me and say, hey, I, I, I am trying to build a, a, I'm trying to build a house. Could you come help me? I could come help you as much as I could hold a cup of coffee and carry heavy things. That's, that's about as much help as I could give you. Because I don't have the knowledge or the ability with the tools to, to, be, able to, to be able to do much. But know who would be good to ask? Somebody who knows what they're doing. They'd be able to run to your aid. We have a God who is able to help us. Well, Hebrews, chapter, Hebrews tells us that we can enter into the throne room of grace boldly asking for help in time of need. Why? Because he's able to help us. He is the one who is able to bring us, uh, the, bring us that salvation and bring us the, what we need. Turn to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says this. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost, to come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Now, we know he's able to save us, but that, that word save to the uttermost means something a little bit different. It's not talking about our initial salvation where we're justified. Uh, it's talking about that sanctification and it's bringing us to the point where we will be one day glorified. We know that God is able. Do you remember what Paul said? That, that uh, he counted all those things as done for the, for the opportunity that he might know Christ. That he, might, that he might know the power of his resurrection. Why is it important that we, uh, that we, uh, that we have more than just a knowledge of the power of, of his resurrection? Because that's the same power that works enough to save us. 
If you're born again, that power is within you. It gave you life when you were dead spiritually. And guess what? It continues to work in you and sanctify you to make you more and more like Jesus Christ. Just like Philippians says, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Christ. You know that he's not done with you yet. He's still working in you. And you get to say, I just can't have victory over this. I just, yes, you can through Christ. Because the power of the resurrection. Now, some of, we want to know the power of the resurrection, but we, we kind of balk at the, the, at, the, at the fellowship of the suffering part. We, we, want to, we want all the victory without the pain. But can I tell you, there is no victory without pain. Try to go to the gym and exercise, and it not hurt. It hurts. And the worse your shape you're in, it hurts more. It's, it's just my fat crying. That's what that is. It's, it's the fat crying as it leaves my body. It's okay. It's, uh, but the, but the, the fellowship of Christ's suffering is we, as we suffer alongside with him. But listen, the, the, it ultimately comes down to, to the end where not only does he say that, that he wants to know the, the power of his resurrection, uh, the, the fellowship of suffering, but being made conformable into his death. Because ultimately, we need to die to self, die to this flesh. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Paul said, I die daily. We need to come to that point where we can die to the flesh, die to self, and follow Christ. In fact, if you go back to Ephesians, that's what all this is talking about. It's all ties together. Oh, we're, we're, we're not there yet. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 through 25. If you go to Jude chapter 2, we have some Bibles in the back that you can trade yours out for, because there is not a Jude chapter 2. If you go to Revelation, turn left. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 through 25 says this, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves, notice it kind of sounds like Ephesians chapter 3, uh, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Sound familiar? Sounds almost uh, almost uh, uh, side by side, identical with Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, and that, that, that the previous few verses. Why? Because uh, this the, the, what we're praying for, what we should be praying for as a church, and, and knowing that we have the, listen, God can do anything, and there is nothing outside of his bounds, right? Other than he cannot act outside of his nature. God cannot lie, because God is, God, because God is holy. He cannot, he cannot do something that would be sinful, because he is sinless. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, but know that his goodness is infinite. Know that his power is, 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 is without limits, Everything about our God is limitless. And when Paul said that you might know the depth and the height and the width, listen, there is no limit to his love. And, and, and as God's love works in us and works through us, and, be, and the word of God and the spirit of God changes us, guess what? We've suddenly become the glory of God in the church. Back to Ephesians chapter 3. I just want to encourage you this afternoon. We've been talking about prayer and seeking the face of God, whether it's for ourselves or for one another, as we supplicate, as we intercede, as we as we seek for God's help, as we pray for our walk with Jesus. That's starting up on. Listen, uh, it, we're, at the end of the, the, of the service today, we're going to close it with some time of prayer for the for the walk with Jesus event. Because listen, what we're praying for falls within the, what what God is. Or what Paul is praying for here in Ephesians chapter 3. We're to pray for one another, but we're also to pray for the saving of souls. All of these things bring honor and glory unto God. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now unto him that is able. We know that God is able because of who he is. You go back into, into Genesis chapter 1, and it says, Jehovah, or God, in the beginning was 
God. That word God is Jehovah, uh, the self the, the, the self sufficient one. Uh, there was none before. There's none after. Uh, uh, any other God, little G, that comes along is not God. Uh, they're, 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 they're idols with ears that don't hear and eyes that don't see and hands that can't can't help. It's a, and they're, they're just they're, they're idols of our own making of things that we want. But we worship and and, and serve a God who is able. Uh, uh, he spoke. He spoke the earth and the world and all the universe into existence. There is literally nothing that God could not do that he doesn't have the power to create. There is no problem that we'll face in our church or in our ministry that God cannot help us to overcome. There is no sickness that God cannot heal. There is, there is, there is no trouble that God cannot help us to face. There is no time that we'll be standing in before persecution that, we, that God cannot help us to stand. There is no temptation that God cannot help us to escape. There is nothing. God is able. Because of his power. We see it in the creation. Uh, it says, it says uh, in Psalms, sorry, look at Romans chapter 1, verse 20 with me. We'll get to Psalms here in a second. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Verse 20 says this For the invisible things of him, God, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We can see in the very creation, God, I, I, I don't know about you, but you, I walk outside and I stare up into the sky. But uh, David said the, the heavens declare the glories of God and the firm of his handiwork. I, I look at the sky and I see the beauty of it, and it, just, it, it absolutely amazes me. I saw a video the other day, somebody was out on at Popham Beach, and uh, uh, they they were there and they watched this. It was a comet, or it wasn't. I don't know. If it was a comet, or some. Actually, I think it ended up being a space station. Uh, what, uh, now that I think of it, uh, but I, I, there have been times when I have seen things that just in, in, in nature that just boggles my mind. God spoke that into existence. It didn't evolve over billions and trillions and billions of years. It, it, God said, "Let it be," and it was. I've seen some amazing artists that could, that could create some amazing things. I've seen some amazing paintings of, of, of people and, and uh, sunsets and all these things. And I looked at it like, wow, that's, that's amazing that they could copy what God did. It may have taken them hours and weeks, but they copied a picture of what God created. And I think that's impressive, but what's more impressive to me is the, the power of God that created it. So we see God's, God's power in creation. You know where, where else we see it? We see it in God's judgments. It may not be as pleasant, but if we think about the power of God and, and how he's judged the earth in the past, going all the way back to Genesis and the flood, a flood wiped out everything in the entire creation and saved eight souls. God was able to protect them and watch over them, not because of the ingenuity of Noah and the boat. It wasn't his, his, his boat-making abilities that kept that thing afloat. It was the hand of God that preserved those eight souls who, in faith, obediently built that ark and got, got onto it. But God judged the world, and it, the power in that was, must have been was fantastic. God judged Babel. God judged Sodom. God judged Pharaoh when the, when, the, when the seas opened up and the Israelites walked across the dry land and then they closed in on the Egyptians. And listen, that's the power of God that we're seeing. We can see the power of God all over the place. We see it in the conversion of sinners. Listen, I can, you can, you can, there are some people that can just sell anything. I got a buddy of mine who works in real estate up in the Bangor area, and I used to work with him uh, uh, I used to work with them on the ambulance. We lived. We actually were roommates for a period of time. Uh, good, uh, nice, nice guy. Good, give me the shirt off his back. Man, he could sell a snake, snake oil. I mean, literally, he could. Uh, uh, he always uh, uh, living with him and knowing him for all those years. He always had some kind of little scheme going. Something. The guys called me this week. He called me a couple days ago and was asking me about a, a town, if I knew about a town in Ohio. He was looking at property to purchase out of state because he's investing in real estate. He's, he, he knows what he's doing. He's making money. He's, he, he's, he's able to do those things. But, but listen, you can, you can have the gift of gab and the ability to talk anybody into anything. But you can't change somebody with that. You may talk them into trying to change. But trying to change and changing are two different things. You can teach a dog to act like a cat. We 
We taught a cat to act like a dog. Remember that stupid cat of Alyssa's? <laughs> we, would, we would play fetch with it. You can teach animals to do a lot of things. It doesn't change their nature, though. It doesn't change what they are. You can teach people to, 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 to do what's right and to, to, to dress in a certain way, to, to not say certain words. You can teach them to go. There are certain, there are certain places that are okay to go and not okay to go. And listen, that is the danger of, of Phariseeism and hypocrisy. Uh, uh, you, you can teach somebody, but you can't convert their soul. Only God can do that. And when we see the power of God into the conversion of a soul when a life that was completely changed and, and you step back and, and you see the difference and, and you know there wasn't some class they went to, it wasn't, it wasn't some book that they read or some, some, some help or some podcast that they listened to. God got into their life and changed them. Their, their nature's different. It's not that they're just acting different. Their nature's different. That's the power of God. And it still works today, by the way. We see the power of God uh, when we're helpless. There are some things that we are just unable to do. I think of the Bible of Abraham and Sarah. Childless. They're beyond years. But what happened to them? She got pregnant and had a baby. Look over Genesis chapter 18, 14. Genesis chapter 18. Verse 14. It says this. Is anything, this is God speaking to Sarah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Now turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Look, look at Hebrews 11, verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Notice why. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. See, it was, it was about God being faithful and God being able. She may have laughed at the thought of it, but in the end she, she, she trusted in the promise of God. She realized God was able to do this. And he's the creator of all things. So, so why not trust his word? Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6, is with his servant uh, coming out of, out, out of, out of the, their tent in the morning. And uh, the servant walks outside and sees something he doesn't like to see. That city surrounded by the army. There for a, an army of hundreds. There for one man. And he, what are we going to do? And Elisha, instead of saying... We're going to trust God, said, prayed, and asked God to open up his eyes so that he could see what Elisha saw. What did Elisha see? He saw the army, but he also saw the army of the Lord round about them. In fact, the Bible tells us in Psalms that, 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 the, that, the, that the army of God watches out for those that, uh, that, 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 that serve him. Uh, we understand he saw that. He, he realized that. He was trusting in the promise of God. There was nothing that he could do to protect himself from those armies. If they wanted to come in and take him and God was willing to allow it, they would have taken him. But he also understood that if God didn't want it to happen, it wasn't going to happen. God protected him in that day. We all see the, the power of God. It's God helps those that are unable to help themselves. We're still there. Well, it may not be in Hebrews. We'll get to the Hebrews in a second. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 11 and 12. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks to the Father which hath 
made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. God is able to strengthen us to be pers to, to persevere, strengthen us to be long suffering, strengthen us, strengthen us to have joy in times of, of trouble. Uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter eleven one more time. In Hebrews eleven, we read of all that God did through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and how God blessed and worked in their lives. It goes on as you, as you read further, uh, getting getting uh, down to. Verse 32, and what shall I say, and what more, or what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, of just Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, and wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, listen, look at all that God did, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to, to flight in armies, uh, in the armies of the aliens. Why? Because they were faithful to a God who who they knew could keep them. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens, see, in, in, in the caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. See, well, yeah, I understand their faith and, 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 as God, and God strengthened them to overcome those things. And that's what we want. We want the strength to win. We want the strength to be victorious. We want to see uh, God close the mouth of lions like he did for Daniel. We want to see uh, God keep us from the fiery furnace like he did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want to see God do this and God do that and God do that. But God also strengthened those in, as they went through different trials that he did not bring them out of. Some were stoned. Some were sawn asunder. Some were in prison. Listen, when you get cut in half, you're dead. That's a, that's a, that, that, that is an injury that, 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 is not, that, that does not constitute life in any way, shape, or form. They suffered. Say, so, well, how is that, how, but how, how does that show God's strength and ability to overcome? Because those men and women did it in faith. God gave them the strength to do that. There's a strength to be able to. Uh, uh, try, I'm trying to remember the name of the one of the men of the the, the pastors that. The, uh, it's in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. I, he was a pastor of one of the first churches. I think the Church of Antioch. Uh, he he uh, he was taken to the to the stake and burned to death. And while he was burning to death, he sang he sang hymns and praised God. I don't know about you, but I'd be saying, ouch, ow, ow, please stop, ow, ow, right? How could he do that? He was singing on the way and never stopped singing. He mocked at, the, at, the, at their attempts to bind, they bound him, and they tied him, he told him, you don't need to do that. He wasn't planning on running away. See, how could somebody willingly walk into that? How could somebody stand there and sing and glorify God? Because God gave him the, the ability, to, in the midst of that trial, to persevere. Whether he took away the pain, whether he just gave him so much joy uh, that he was able to, to I, don't, I don't know. I've never been in that position, to be honest with you. But I trust and I know that I have a God who is able, that if I ever get to that position, as long as I'm faithful and as long as I trust him, he will keep me. God is able. We can see it from history. Not only is God evil, but God's willing. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, 31, 32. God's willing because he's good. Now again, that doesn't mean God's going to give us everything that we ask for. God tells us if we ask a misc, and ask, looking for something for to, to, to uh, consume under our own lust that we're not going to receive it. But God is a good God. 
He wants to give us good gifts. He wants to do what's, what's best for us. And honestly, he knows what's best for us. Romans 8, 31 and 32 says this. So what shall we say then to these things of God before us? Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. How shall he not with, also, with him also freely give us all things? He gave us his son. That is the most self-sacrificing, self, I, 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 don't, I, I, could, I don't know that I could do it. Zeke told me to die for him yesterday. <laughs> I mentioned that this morning. It was hilarious because five-year-olds always say the funniest things. He said, I'll die for you. I'll die for you, Daddy. And I said, I don't want you to die for me. And he, he was, he, I said, I'll, I'd die for you. And he goes, okay, do it. <laughs> Not right now, buddy. <laughs> Maybe someday. But Christ gave, it, Christ gave himself. The Father gave the Son. If, God, if, if he'll give us something that painful because it's beneficial to us, how much will he want to give us other things that are good for us? Now listen, some of the things we're asking for aren't good for us. We, they, may, they may seem good for us. We may think they're good for us. They may fit along with our plan. But that doesn't mean it fits with his plan. I'm glad God didn't give me everything that I wanted. Because I'd still be living, I'd be living in Ohio, and I'd be married to somebody else, and who knows what kind of, uh, who knows where, uh, I'm glad God changed my heart. Get myself out of that hole before I get myself in trouble. At 18, I hadn't met her. Of course, at 18, she'd have been 14, and I'd have been, <laughs> yep. <laughs> we didn't meet until till I was almost 30. God brought the right one into my life. And I'm thankful he did. God is good. As I read this here in Ephesians 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him that is able, and well, just quickly it says, to do exceeding abundantly. Meaning, the word exceeding means much more, and abundantly means much more than needed. Above all that we ask or think. He is able to, to do it more than we could ever imagine. Just putting it in, in layman's terms or paraphrasing it. Much, much more than we could ever imagine. Not just so much that we could ask, more than we could ever think. It's done through the power that works in us. Now notice the second, the, the last verse there, verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. All of this door to seek for, the, the praying for one another, the praying for the strength, praying for the for for the, the knowledge of God's love and the being filled with God's love and filled with the fullness of the Spirit of God. Listen, all of that brings honor and glory to God. In fact, the point of prayer, one of the, one of the points of prayer, the point of our life is to glorify God. In fact, the point of the church is to glorify God. Look over to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing in the water by the word, that, we, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The, uh, the church in Christ is, a picture, is, is, is pictured in, in the, the, the relationship between husband and wife. And God gave himself for us. And Christ, Christ gave himself for us. And he's sanctifying us by the word that he might present us glorious. Glorious to God. Listen, it's through the riches of his glory that he does these things. According to Ephesians chapter 3. But again, the purpose of it all is that we might glorify God. So as we pray and we're, we're seeking God's face, pray for those things that would glorify God. Pray for the strengthening of our church. Pray for the strengthening of us as individuals. Not that we just have strength to persevere. Not that we just have strength, to, but strength that we might grow in the inner man. That we might draw closer to the Lord. That we might be indwelt and filled by the Spirit of God. That we might be able to do something in this world that we can't do on our own with, without Christ and without the Holy Spirit. 
And the whole purpose isn't just to, to give the eyes on Fellowship Baptist Church and Pastor Rob Richards, or, or on whoever can bring the most number of people into church, or can, can win whatever contest we decide to do to, to, to get people to bring people. We shouldn't have to win contests to get people to invite folks. We should just invite them. We should draw them in, pulling some from the fire, others having compassion. All for the glory of God. All for the glory of God. God's glory is the goal, the goal of all creation. It's the goal of redemption. And it's the goal of the church. David said, the heavens declare the glories of God. The child of God when saved, I believe it's Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 4 says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto him by the adoption, under the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, Notice this, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, and whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And I believe it says it one more time, that we might be, verse, jump down to verse 11, in whom, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should, verse 12, be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. The purpose for regeneration is that we might, in, 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 in being sanctified and mirroring the righteousness of Christ in our lives as, we, as he sanctifies us and changes us, that we might be the glory of God. Now, we're, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. None of us are, but we're, but he's changing us to make us to be that. That we might be the praise to his glory. Ephesians 5, you don't have to turn there, said that he was, he was washing us by the water of the word, that he might present us to himself spotless without blemish. The glorious church. So the, the glory of God is the goal of creation. It's the glory of redemption. It's also the glory of the church. God's glory is displayed by the church as he works in us as individuals. And he sanctifies us by his word. Now coming back to, we've been covering prayer for weeks. I took a break this morning. But we're as we pray, seeking God to do something, seeking God to work, let's take a look at what we're praying. And does it glorify God? If God answered your prayer, would he be glorified? If you're praying for salvation of somebody, of the lost, praying for, for, for what would Jesus, the, the walk with Jesus, we should be praying for the walk with Jesus, amen? Praying that every time that, that, uh, that somebody clicks on that video, in fact, God would direct people to click on that video, every time they watch it and their parents watch it with their kids, that the Spirit of God would, would cause the, the children to ask questions and, and, and make, make the parents inquisitive if, they, if, they're, if they're without Christ. And, and if somebody, through this, and through the Spirit of God, the Word of God, that somebody might get saved. Not so that we can ha have a notch on here and, and celebrate and, and, and say, look what we did. We reached this many people. But for the glory of God. Paul, it was amazing how Paul in his life would go into some towns and some people would get saved. And then there would be those that didn't want to hear it. And those typically that didn't want to hear it stirred up enough of a crowd to get them chased out of town. Sometimes even chased after his life. It didn't stop him from going. He didn't go around saying, look what I did. He just, he remembered the purpose. And the times that he, uh, that he was beaten, the times that he was stoned to death, you know what he did? He didn't 
oh, woe is me, because if it's all about us, that's what we that's what we would focus on. The struggle, the trial, the, the, the complaints. But when it's all about God, listen, hey, I want to glorify God. If I want to glorify God in this situation while I'm being persecuted, guess what? I'll be fine. I'll rejoice in that persecution, and I want to keep on preaching the gospel of Christ. And that's what he did every single time. How he got up after being thought they thought he was dead it was only by God's grace that God enabled him to do it. The question is, would that be us? The only problem with these plastic shields things, I can't scratch my nose if it itches. May God help us. Remember that God's glory is to be displayed in our lives. So nature does it. In fact, does it automatically. When, when the, when the disciples and those who were cheering Christ as he comes into the Jerusalem that final day, the Pharisees make him stop because they're they're crying out, Hosanna, hail the King of the Jews. They're, they're, they're worshiping him as the as their coming king, what they expected. The Pharisees, why don't you tell him to stop? He says, if I did, the rocks would cry out. Now, would the rocks have cried out? Jesus said they would have. I don't know exactly what that would mean, but I sure would have liked to see it. But the truth is, the heaven does declare the glory of God. It does it naturally. So should we. Not in our fleshly nature. Our fleshly nature is against God. Uh, our fleshly nature wants nothing to do with the things of God. But our spiritual nature should want to glorify God in all that we are. May God help us. Let's, let's take a, a, the last few minutes and just close in a time of prayer for the walk with Jesus, pray for our church, and uh, may God help us to, to uh, see him work, and may he get all the glory for whatever takes place. Uh, but it is, it is something that uh, I believe is absolutely necessary. So that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to ask with the Troy to start, and uh, if you if you would start praying for us, and then um, if uh, anybody else wants to pray out loud, you're more than welcome to. You can uh, uh, if you want to just pray silently. That's fine. I'm not going to force somebody to pray pray out loud. But um, uh, and then and then brother Rich, could you close after a little bit if once everybody's done?